everyone and welcome to Red United TV and welcome to the catch up volume 12. Yes, a despicable week for Manchester United fans, a terrible ending to the transfer window, terrible result against Tottenham Hotspurs. I don't know how you Manchester United fans are feeling, but I'm feeling quite depressed and quite low for a couple of days. I woke up after the transfer window on Monday, Tuesday morning, feeling disgusted with myself. I was like, I couldn't continue. This guy sent me a message at 1.45 in the morning, 8 a.m. That's how I know, you know <coughs> how much he was hurt. This guy sent me a lot as voice note of how much he was hurt after that. That transfer window said it all for us. Um, exactly the ambition of Manchester United and their board. Do everything all last minutes with having a free month to do everything. Well, we're going to venture straight into that her her horrendous performance that nightmare that we had on Sunday, which was Tottenham against Manchester United. Manchester United playing at home, getting humbled by Spurs, getting humbled by Jose Mourinho for bats. Yes, Manchester United won, Tottenham Hotspur six. Of course, we was a man down, but that didn't make a difference because we was horrible before we had a man down. Um, my personal opinion of that match, spineless, spineless cowards, all their mums as well can get it now because I'm upset. Yes, their mums too. All of them. All of them, including Olish, your mum fam. I don't need to say any more about, I don't need to say what about your mum. Just know that when I say your mum is peak, innit? But yes, yes. No, I, I, I'm sorry if I'm abusing him. I didn't say anything bad about his mum. I just said your mum. That's all. But yeah, I'm hook. We're going to start off with you with that match and your feelings. You got like two minutes. But I ain't going to lie. For the first time, I felt tormented after a football match. Mm. Like, I don't know if you ever been in a situation that you, at night you can't sleep, you can't do nothing. It's like you're worried something about something that you don't know about. Mm -hmm. But this time around, I was worried about something that I knew of. That we lost 6-1. It was hard to take in. I prayed to God. I'm bringing my religious side now that we never go through this again. Mm -hmm. I really do. Pray. Our performances were poor. Like the defend, the only person that defend that can give a little bit of. Maybe if I was to pick another top eleven team to play, that might make that team is Mumba Soccer. But Shaw, Bailey, and Maguire, nah. They turned down. I mean, you mean to turn up? Mourinho of all people, football shit, everything shit, but. He came to Old Trafford and won in style. Sat there, crossed his leg like all he usually did, folded his arms and smiling. But like I said, I pray that we never go through this again. And I know how all the other Manchester fans feel. I know we felt. And I can't. Like, every time I start, that's because I'm going through emotions and stuff. And I'm still going through the same emotion. It's been how many days? Three days. Hopefully, things get better. So it must be painful. It is really painful, it is guys. Painful. There's so much silence around here, you know. He's usually a bit active. Uh, usually, not. I'm always active. I'm always positive. But like I said last week, Manchester done a number on me. You guys laughed. But now I can see Manchester done a number on all of us. Because you all find yourself in the same boat. But the only thing that I could say... Uh, that about the match that I really that really got me was Mattel. And I still believe that even though he retaliated, he shouldn't have done it as a professional. But I understand. If you was to get choked with your elbow doing nothing to someone, what would you do? You retaliate. Yeah. We hope he didn't do it. But I would I, maybe I would have done worse. I don't know. But hopefully next time we do something better. We come back on top. It's hard to take punch. He had to take um it's <laughs> <laughs> he's lost the worst. Like, I'm lost, like he's this lost how bad it is. Like it's he's hard to worst. take. Jakes. Yes. What are you saying about that match against Spurs? <sighs> Terrible game. Um upsetting day for all the United fans. Um just a poor performance all round. Uh, the defense was poor. The fact that Fernandez came off at half time, I heard that he had a little bust up with Maguire. 
Maguire and, and also Matic as well. That's Matic. why Matic stayed behind as well. Okay. Um, but that's the passion we needed from the get go, and it didn't happen until the first half in the changing room. It was a poor game. I don't know what else to say about it really. Very poor. What Talk. bugs me is how are you gonna let someone just get into the club show more passion than you lot that have actually been in the club forever? Thank you. It hurts. Who was the most disappointing player in that match for you? Maguire. Maguire. Maguire all day. Did you, did you see the, 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 the stupidness he did? Um, the holding back the whip, Irish whiplash, the wrestling move he done against New Shaw, oh. holding him back twice, getting him getting in the way, conceding the free kick, and then not standing on the ball, just just standing there looking at Kane in the eyes, watching Kane swap the ball into Son. It was very and he cool. cost us eighty million. He cost us eighty million. What a waste of eighty million, guys! He looked like an eight million player, let alone wow. eighty million. Wow, what a waste Poor. of 80 million. And to think that we, we was holding back to not spend an extra, what, 20 million or 30 million to buy Sancho to meet the price, and we, we, we cough up on this guy. We cough up all the change on this guy. Mm. You know, it, it hurts me. You know, guys, watching that match, you know, at half time, it was, it was really, really painful. I was saying this in my match reaction, it, it felt like. At the start, when we was one year up, it felt like a, a nice evening with me and my wife. All of a sudden, boom, 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 boom. Robbers come inside. You're thinking, what's going on? That not quite there. The robbers are inside. It's two one. They, they, they held me, holding me down, tying me, but, but put, covering my face. I can't see. But when they go to my wife, they hold her down, tie her down, and look at me in the eye. Remove her skirt because that's, that's how it felt like as the girls went in. Raping my wife and make forcing me to watch it and I can just see her cry and cry as she looks at me directly in the eye. That pain, it was hurtful. To watch that second off knowing that I don't want to watch this. I do not want to witness it. It got worse. It got worse. It got worse. I remember Jake said to me, it's going to get worse. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not always optimistic. I was just like, I hope you don't. But after the match, I messaged him and said, bro, you was right. What did I tell you, bro? I said it was going to be 7-1. I was one goal off. One goal off. Yeah. He actually said 6 1 or 7 1. Mm -hmm. And and what hurts me most that, of course, I predicted in my match reaction that I didn't have no hope in it. You said 50 50, you slight confident. And and the fact that I was kind of right, and I hate the fact that I was right. <laughs> but even though I was right, it, 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 hurt. it really hurts, guys. Manchester United fans, I, kudos to you. Man of the match for that match was all of you guys because we had to bear with all of us to that. To, to, it's like watching the Passion of Christ when Jesus was getting whipped. We 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 are the man of the match to just withstand that and take it, take it like a man or a woman, whichever wherever you are, and just 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 watching the whole around. ninety minute, whole ninety minute. Maguire makes me sick, you know, guys. You know, he he absolutely makes me sick. I said I said the last time I said Lenny love a better name, but Lenny love just weak. Can I say something? Eat. What the hell was Maguire doing when Anthony Martial was being sent off? You saw him sitting back, standing behind, not even challenging the referee like a captain does. And Bobba had to do his job for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what, I, I think that's what sent Bobba through emotions. And he, after that send off of Martial, I think Bobba lost it. Cause for yeah, the, of course for he the, did. For the first five, ten minutes, I actually saw Bobba having a go at the referee, upset. But like we said, it is what it is. We hope better, better luck next time. For me, why sell small into Roma when we have centre backs as poor as Sunday? <laughs> For me, Smalling gets true, into though. the team before Maguire. I it's know true. we want a, a new centre back. We all want a Kalabai or a Alabamecano or yeah. even an Alaba. But if we don't want to sign anyone, because obviously our board do not want to spend money, as we've seen in the transfer window, why not keep the players you have? Why keep Jones and set up Smalling? Which I don't understand. Jones. Why not improve our centre-back competition by saying, you know what, Smalling, you had a great season at Roma in Italy. Come back now and compete with the likes of Maguire and Bailly and Lindelof. Shit. But we sell him Shit. and not bring another centre-back in. Shit. No, it's just was, puzzling. That was appalling. And Marshall being sent off, guys. Um, and of course, my public, my personal opinion of Marshall being sent off, he shouldn't have done what he done. No. Yeah. No. It's inexcusable. Yeah. I can understand to an extent because of 
me being a man and I've got my pride and ego as a black man as well, someone to hit me in the throat, it, 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 obviously you will retaliate. But then again, you need to know that you're a professional football player. Mm -hmm. There's cameras around you, VAR is active. Mm -hmm. You cannot react. In fact, do that what Lamella done. As soon as you hit you in the throat, I, I don't want to condone bad things, but do you, why are you dropping the floor? To be fair, the hit from Lamella was looks a, a lot worse than, worse than, than, exactly. than the tap that he gave I don't, to Lamella. Kind of but so you, he didn't tap it. He, did tap he it. just used he, he just used two fingers attack. like this, but someone used elbow yeah. and banging your but, throat. But let me ask something: <sighs> Who's in charge of VAR? Because a lot of the decisions this season have been poor. I feel like they need to get a body of maybe ten to twenty people who are designated. To watch that VR in every Premier League game, mm -hmm. people who have taken tests, I don't know, who have a high IQ. Because if you saw the incident, every single person admitted that both Lemela and, and Martial needed to be sent off. You can't send one off and keep one on. Is it a case of now you have to fall to the floor before something happens? But he was standing for a few seconds and he just dropped on the floor. Yeah. Why not book him for diving then? Exactly! Yeah. And at least red and then at least book him for diving. And the people that were running VR, what did they see? Because I saw two I saw two red cards. Exactly. I saw two red cards. Lamella should be it. sent up as well. Yeah, Lamella should be sent up. And I and I applaud um Graham Sooners for the first time in my whole entire life for saying that Yeah, they both should have been sent off. They both should have been sent off. Yeah, but... and, 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 and much of the day, they, they say the same thing. Literally every sporting outlet said the same thing. Even they, live, the live commentary. So what they, happened to VAR? I it's don't It's a bit know. dodgy right at the moment. I, I, just, lie. We just, I just... But listen, know. let's not take away from the fact that we were getting duppy before that. Like, yeah. even we without were. the red card, we probably still would have lost, lost. 5 or 6-1. Yeah. So this is not an excuse, but this is just what we're seeing and our feedback from what we're seeing. Thank you. And Oli, Oli gonna social himself. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go about him. Um, well, he's on. The, he's, well, <clears throat> his ass is on fire right now, <laughs> as you speak. Um, just recently, recent news saying that Manchester have been talks with um, or flirting with Mauricio Pochettino. Yeah, right. Oli's performance as a manager in that game, the way he was unable to manage that game, says it all. The fact that he stayed in his seat throughout the whole 90 minutes, not, mo not more than 10 minutes on the touchline. I never saw that. A team to be down by four and a half time, you need to coach that team throughout the rest of the 45 minutes by standing on that, on that, on that touchline. Sure. He sat back and I know he gave up and I know he's oh, useless. Goodness. I know he has no tactics in his brains to, 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 to mastermind a, a comeback. You know, in fact, his substitution said it all that he doesn't know what he's doing. I understand that you said he wants to shore up things at the back or make sure he doesn't get embarrassed. Yeah, but his choices, his substitutions are all questionable. Um, everything that he does is questionable. The way the team was set up to play is questionable. Guys, what is your personal opinion of this guy, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? Should he leave? Should he resign? Should he step away? Should, should we sack him? Um, for me, I'm with you guys, or I'm with you, Avro and Spice, mm -hmm. in the terms that I feel like he needs to go. He's not the great. He's not a great manager. His experience or his CV shows Mould and uh, Cardiff. Mm -hmm. That's not good enough to manage United. And the tactics on show, the fact that he sits down and doesn't go on the touchline, he needs to go. However. That's just a small piece in the puzzle for me. We can get another manager in, and again, 12 months down the line, we're going to come to the same problem. They're going to want key players to come in and improve the squad. The board is going to say no. Mm -hmm. Since 2014, we have not had any revenue coming to the club in terms of the Glazers have taken out £90 million from our club since 2014. We sit 20th in the Premier League in terms of investment. We have not had investment in the last four to five to six years. How can we win the Premier League with no investment? True. How can we win the Champions League with no investment? True. Why is it that since 2014, the likes of Burnley, Leicester, Tottenham, all these other teams have had more even investment Arsenal. into the club, even from the Arsenal. Owners, from the owners. 
from the owners. So for me, Oli needs to go. However, there is a much larger issue at hand, which for me is the owners. So Man United fans, stop purchasing Man United tickets. Stop buying season tickets because what you're doing is you're putting money into Glazers' pockets. They're out there in America having a bubble, having a laugh, enjoying their life and just watching us and collapse. I guarantee you they have no idea what's going on in this country nope. of the club that they own. All they know is that they're making money and that whatever Ed is saying to them, that's all they know. But to answer your question, yes, Oli should go. Oli should go! Mok? But I don't even know what to say. I'm just sitting here smiling because I ain't never been the fan of Oli. I've never been the fan. From day one? From day one, I said, this guy is not competent enough to manage this club. And that broke down some um, some stuff to a judge like, I think two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And he was like, yeah. If you are applying for a job, your CV should have been good. Mm -hmm. Now, Manchester is a job. Oli ain't got nothing on his CV. That takes him to manage Manchester United. So why have we got Oli managing this club? And one thing that bugs me, I keep saying it every week. Why do we always why do Oli always put his hands in his pocket? Mm -hmm. We lose into Tottenham, right? In the first half, for one. He had this uh, Manchester puffer jacket and we pulled it up. With his hands in his pocket out. Walked down the the, um, the, 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 the whatever. And second half. Came back in with a blazer, but guess what? His hands still in his pocket. <laughs> Confused guy. He doesn't know what. Like he wear. changed. He changed. Came back in with a blazer, but hands in his pocket. Well, if he came back out with a blazer, a blazer tells me you're on some serious it's, shit now. Exactly. And you was, I'm not on some serious shit. Nah, he maybe that was even worse because for the for the fourth time, he's sitting behind Carrick, sitting behind his player. Like you said, probably playing a um, football manager on the screen and that. You get what I mean? Like, it's right, but at the end of the day, it's been too much. Mm -hmm. Like, I can't really, like, I've got to do this. <laughs> I actually got to do this. Like, hey, take some drink. Drink some, drink some, some water. This, water. This, water. This, this is what Manchester <laughs> has done to me. Trust me. Suck like, the life out of him. Maybe the reason why we fall this week because we maybe we finally love the club better than the people actually pay money for the club, like the Glazers and stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're just making money out of the club. But that passion, loving that of in the guy for the club. Because we see, we sit here and watch Manchester play week in, week out. Even when we lost against Tottenham, I sat here, watched the whole 90 minutes. It's like having a palavra with your woman, but you can't leave the house. <laughs> and you know how that gets. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. But at the end of the day, fact, um, at the end of the, at the end of the day, Oli out. Oli out. Mm -hmm. Oli out. And you know one thing, yeah, that doesn't help Oli is like, I realize Oli doesn't have good friends. Doesn't have good friends. You see, yeah, this Gary Neville, um, Carrick, Car Michael Carrick, or Phil Neville, whoever he's played with, all these ex players that would back him and say that, oh, it's... it's real Ferdinand? No, Real Ferdinand has... Yeah, Real Ferdinand has some, some, some time back. The only people I haven't backed him is Everett and, and Van Persie. Yeah. Those guys, you're not good friends because me, if you're my friend and you love me and I'm not doing well what I'm supposed to do, you're supposed to tell me, bro, I love you and everything and that, but well, I beg you, quit. You're not good. Real <laughs> friends tell you the truth. A good friend told you, Gary Neville, who sits there for Sky Sports and always backs Oli, making it look like the players are not doing much, but not addressing the truth that he's tactically naive, he's tactically inept, he's not a good coach, his coaching team is crap. Just be honest, I'd be like, Amok, you're not good at FIFA. Stop playing FIFA. FIFA. <laughs> Simple as. No, I know he's, he's good at FIFA. Nah. Just an example. <laughs> like, my friend, you're not good. Like, I, I love you and everything. I beg you resign from Man United for the love of Man United, just resign. You're not good. A good friend will do that, but they don't. But you know what? I hear what you're saying, but at the same time, only one walk. One, the peace is there. Two, it's the pride as well. Three, it's also the hope that things can change. No. We want him to leave, but realistically, he's not going to walk away from a contract. Said, it's just one thing that can take. The peace is there. The piece is that the that's the only thing. If he, if he wants to, if he wants to ensure that he gets paid, yeah, and get paid off, yeah, he gets then because start doing stuff that's sacrificed. We talk about slap Ed Woodward. <laughs> yeah, that's what you have to do. 
Why did they employ this guy? Because of the 1999 reasons or whatever, right? He's the ex-player that won the league. Or whatever, or league and Champions League was right. And do you know, no, no, what, what makes him a legend? Because all I know is that came off Rap, the bench. He was a you, you was a bench man. No, 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 he was a backup. So what? what? But he was a backup dancer that scored goals, vital goals as well. Goals, no, 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 but can never be a, a manager. He's a shit manager. No. He's a shit manager. Yeah, but he was a very good player. He's a legend. He's a legend of Manchester. He's a legend of Manchester. What makes him a legend? I want to know what makes him a legend. It's only it's only a legend. He's a very good player. Was he the best player? No, I can no. tell you. No, Cantona was better than him. Dwight and Andy Cole was better than him. Yeah, maybe Dwight and Andy Cole should come in and manage as well. No, but they were all no, better than him. They, they, they came in. They would leave the club because they got passion. They mm. love this club. You should mm. ask him. Does Oli love this club, mm. or is Oli in this situation because of the contract got given to him by Ed? Because that's what that's what I'm saying. Oli got contract from Ed that he ain't never seen in his life. Of course. So. Only to know, it's like you said, <coughs> ego might kick in a little bit. He said, you know what? All right, cool. I'm, I'm staying. But why, if like a real man, I've been saying this. Mm -hmm. If I find myself in a situation, this man them here know me. I ain't never going to say yes to something I am not. I can't do. I'm not capable enough to do. I will never do that in my life. Because you know what? Happiness is something that I advocate for. I want to be happy. You look and see how stressed I've been this for the past few minutes. I'm actually stuttering because I'm stressed out. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, if all you know you're not capable enough to do something, why can't you walk out of the club for the sake of the club's sake, the fans, the way we say we love this club? Oli, the same situation you find yourself in, Van Gaal was in it, but he won trophy. Marino was in it, he won trophy. Mm -hmm. So I can only compare you to the other guy that I want to say his name, that I forgot about. Yeah. That nine months. Yeah, that nine month guy. Yeah, yeah, that nine months. <laughs> you wanna say his name? That pregnancy. Who's that? that? Oh, him. Now his name started with M. Oh, the, the, the name M, that should M. never be mentioned, like Lord yeah. Voldemort. We don't wanna say his name because we forgot about that. She, that nine month got erased. I feel like Spain. Just, 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 just. You know what I mean? Like just and that's that. how we felt. You see, look, <laughs> how, look his reaction. <laughs> that guy gave me nightmares. <laughs> look his reaction. That's only this how we're feeling right now. And we don't want this to continue. So the best thing I think you should do. Pack your bags and leave this club. Oh, walk. Do you know what? If walk he was, away. I think logically he probably wouldn't. But if he was to walk away, that would show and highlight to the management, highlight to the board that it needs to do enough. something. From the fact that a manager is actually walk walking away. away, exactly, it will say a lot. There's a lot of message to us yes. that there's something wrong upstairs. Yes. But let's move on to our transfer window deadline of the players that we signed. So. On transfer deadline on Monday, of course, prior to that, we only signed Van der Beek. We had three, three months of transfer window that was open for three months. The longest ever transfer window. More than transfer three window. months. On the last day, we signed what? Three players? No, four players. Not even 24 hours. Within the last 14 hours. Yes, we mm -hmm. signed... 14 hours. We signed what? Three to four players. Mm -hmm. Two... Of course, Diego Dalo Cavani. One called um, Traore in, from Atlanta, who will be joining us in January. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And one and the other one called Pelest Pelestri. I don't know, some Uruguayan winger, 18 year old. Both two youngsters that we signed. It, the, it must be the most disappointing transfer window of them all. I would say the donkey of the, of, of the transfer window was definitely us. True. They, they lied to us. Um, <laughs> Woodward it's Lightroom is a fraud, he's a fraud. Mm -hmm. Everything about it is a fraud. We never signed Sancho. I am absolutely disappointed, disgusted. I'm disgusted in that transfer window. After that transfer window, I was, I woke up the very next morning like a, a man <laughs> that knows his wife is cheating on him. Yeah? That knows his wife is cheating on him and I've seen condoms that's been used. I know that it wasn't mine and I see sperm in it. Yeah? I know my wife is cheating on me but I love her so much. Like, I can't leave. I can't leave because I love her. Yeah? Yeah. Hoping one day she'll fall back in love with me and choose me <laughs> and stop cheating on me. That's how hurt I am as a Manchester United fan that I was so down. What was your opinion, Jace, on, on that, the, the, the transfers that we've made? Um, briefly, just go over <clears> the players that you thought that was good. I think Cavani's good. That's all we needed. We needed a winger right now. Not. But we've got an 18-year-old that's Uruguay that's coming in. But whether he's ready, that's the next question. 
Mm. And then we got another one that's coming in January, which I don't understand why. Mm-hmm. But it was work permit reasons, guys, if you want to know why. You need mm-hmm. to get work permit sorted out. Well, that's what happens when you go for people last minute. Last minute, though. But yeah, they, well, they, 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 months. They, they, all those transfers they said, they claim they've been tracking these players. Even Cavani has said they tried to sign them last they're year. They're lying. They're lying. They're lying. They're liars. Beaching. Bro- that's what, that's what Edward does. Does a lot of this slip service, fraud, fraud lip service as well. Yeah, will catch you sleeping though. What do you so, think? So, last season we came, what, 21 points or mm-hmm. more mm-hmm. behind the top top spot? Yeah. That shows that you need to improve your squad. And by improving your squad, that means the first 11, to be you good. need better than that. Mm-hmm. Van der Beek was a decent signer for me. Why is he not starting? Why is he not starting? Why is he not being embedded into the team straight away? Yeah. I don't understand that. So for me, it looks like that's a squad signing, not a key player signing, which we evidently need two or three key player signings. What about Cavani? Cavani. Me, personally, I'm not a fan. In the terms of, I know he's a a very good striker in the past, but I I thought we was past this 30-plus player. Why are we signing a 33-year-old and giving him a number seven shirt? I feel like that is a last-minute deal. It stinks of desperation. And to be honest, I'm not happy, but I will back him because he's a United player. So once he starts playing, I'll be hoping he scores goals. But we've signed him on a one to two, one year contract with the yeah, option to extend. I don't understand. It's, I don't understand. With the last two players, mm-hmm. youngsters for the future, one coming in January. We need players now. Why are you playing you. signing players for the future? We need something now. We lost 6 1 now. We didn't lose 6 1 in January coming. We lost 6 1 now. So why are we buying players for the future when we don't have the first 11 intact? And look, what do you think about Manchester United's whole operation of transfer activities this whole three months? Then? To be honest with you, if we send Telus and Cavani like the first month during this transfer window, mm. I probably could have been excited. Yeah. But sat back and watches, like I don't know, sing musicals. Because that's like that's what that's that's what I can say. Oh, we signed Sancho. Oh, we went ahead. A great deal in principle with Sancho, right? Why did we not do whatever it takes to bring that kid to Old Trafford? Because this is what I'm saying. Why we put ourselves in a situation or a predicament that we can't prevent if it goes left? Do you know what? I've been thinking about that. And I have a feeling that we didn't really... We was never going to sign Sancho. It was all... Fairy tale because when Dortmund said six weeks ago, or maybe two months ago, this is the price, take it or leave it, mm-hmm. and we've been tiptoeing around, we haven't made a bid, and then a week before the transfer deadline, we bid 20, 20 million pounds less than what they wanted. I feel like it was just a bid to say to the fans, we tried. Bullshit. Well, and, sorry for my language. No, it's fine. Bullshit. Everyone's frustrated. Nah, you can swear today if you want nah, to. It, uh, it's it's yeah. just sounded pathetic. And to be honest with you, I ain't got nothing against the players that just. We just got that yeah. came into the team. We have, like, to, back we have to back them. Mm-hmm. Like these players, I actually like Tellers. I like Cavani. No, I, I, I'm really sad about the Tellers. Like, yeah, me too. Really Tellers. Like, like, Luke Shaw needs to sit down. No, he actually said it himself. Mm-hmm. So he needs a competition. Yeah, so, yeah, no, he can, yeah. no, clearly. You see that guy? Really, I like Luke Shaw. Oh, Thumbs oh, up to you. Thumbs up, look, I like competition because I know I'm shit. No, he <laughs> said the squad needs more players <laughs> and then they went to get a left back. <laughs> no, no, he, even no, he, he said, mentioned, he said, no. he mentioned he, his, his win. Even, he, even he doesn't mind that, if he has competition. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay. he did say it. Okay. And do you know what this I'm saying, yeah? If Luke Shaw can do it, why won't Oli do it? But you know what? The transfer is not down to Oli. I'm very sure it was never it's not down. down to Oli. No, it's never down to Oli. And he's, but this I'm saying to you, yeah? When you are a manager or coach, mm-hmm. there are ways that you pull strings. It depends on the contract no. you sign. Yeah, it does. Because yeah. some managers are signed okay. knowing that you're not involved in the transfer, you just coach the team. Why am I going to sign for Manchester United to manage Manchester United and I can't make decisions when it comes to transfers? Of course, because when you come from Mold and Manchester United come calling saying there you can go. be manager, but there you're not going to do this, there you're not going to do go. that. There we go. Of now course. you just answer the question I asked, I've been asking, yeah. which means all is not competent enough to manage his club. Or he's not good enough to, for them to give the responsibilities Mourinho of transfers. took everything to the media. I ain't seen Oli go run his mouth, not mm-hmm. never that. But when you need something, 
tell the media because they are listening to you. Yeah. Do you know what? Do you, do you know what they said about Oli on Sky Sport the other day when we were listening to Tottenham? He goes with he say Oli sticks to the script, mm -hmm. which means he does exactly what Ed yeah. tells him yeah. to yeah. do. Yeah. Basically, he's a very good actor. And like we said last time, yes. it's on the chokehold and oh, babes, what you <laughs> That's what we see. Like, to be honest with you, I can't really say too much because I haven't seen this new squad yet. Mm -hmm. Like, we might be in for a shocker mm -hmm. that they might come in and change the whole concept behind. Because remember, I'm just going to say this. Only, right. only got... Happening. Yeah, but only got this lock. Mm -hmm. Getting one or two players and all of a sudden everything changes for him. So, with that little bit of optimism, let's see what happens. Let's see. Let's see, but with me, oh guys, <laughs> guys, it's, it's a tough show to do, you know, because what we've just experienced on Sunday and then just to the climax on s Monday, Monday night, night, mm. or Tuesday night. Okay. left me wanting to leave Earth. That's how bad it is, you know, so depression is exactly. hitting us. Exactly. I've got yeah. work on Monday and I was scared to go in on into work on Monday because I've got Liverpool, Arsenal and Tottenham fans at work. Can I tell you guys a story guys about this Manchester United shirt? I bought this shirt pre prior to the game. Around <laughs> 12 o'clock. Yeah. And then of course they wanted they wanted to do the printing of course. I said yeah don't worry I'll, I'll get it later. I went home. I bought I already bought this shirt. We got packed in 6-1. I told them I'll be back the next day. I didn't call back there on Monday. I went back there on Tuesday because how embarrassed I was. And when I went to the counter, I said, can you please put that in a black bag so no one can <laughs> see through the bag just to see so they can peek this. Because that's how embarrassed I am as a Manchester United fan. I'm ashamed. I told them, please put it in a black bag, no see-through bag. I don't want a bag where you can see light, light passes through because if anyone can see that, they'll start laughing at me on the streets and it's Brixton. And I don't, I don't want people laughing at me on the streets. Hey guys, we move on straight up because we as we are near the end of the show. Thank you guys for watching and remember to subscribe as well as always. Um, the signing obviously the transfer window is done. Of course, now I'm gonna ask you guys who is your signing of the season so far. Okay. We will do it at the end, towards the end of the season again. Mm -hmm. And now that the signings are done, what what are your top four predictions now? Now that you've seen a couple of teams play, what top? Who's the top best signing? Who, top four? Who's the best signing? Okay, and your top four. Premier League prediction. Okay, uh, my best signing so far, 100% Hannes. Yes. Hannes Rodriguez. He's just come on and just played football. And I loved it when Ancelotti came out and said, football's not hard. Football's simple. 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 We have the same simple. size pitch. You have one board, the same goals. The goals are not different size. 11 players. On the 11 pitch. players. <laughs> he just came on. He's been and doing he his thing. Leeds doing a match. Oh. So Hannes, he's been... Scoring goals, assisting, there's only been a few games. He's for me the best signing so far in the league. The mm -hmm. Corey's been good too, maybe a second with Allen, but everything are doing very well. Top four. Um, I still think Liverpool and City will be up there, even though Liverpool lost 7 2. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and we can't even laugh about it because we won't. It didn't make no difference. Uh, it don't make no difference. It's just 7 2, 6 1, which means we both lost by five goals. Mm -hmm. So Liverpool City, um, third spot, I'd give to Tottenham, you know. I think Jose is bringing a lot out of these players at the moment. And going forward, I feel like if Kane and Son can stay fit, Kane is always injured for a month or two, but if they can stay fit, for at least 28 games of the Premier League, they'll come third. And last and foremost, I think Everton will snatch fourth, you know. I wow. think they match the Champions might. League. Wow. And look, what yeah. about you? Mm -hmm. Signing of the season so far? And your top four Premier League position? I have to go with James. Have it. Of course. Mm -hmm. I think we all can do that. Just, not that we don't know what he does. We all know what he does. But watching play in Real Madrid and watching play right now in the Premier League, very impressive. And you just go thumbs up to you because mm -hmm. he was in doubt. He didn't even believe in you. <laughs> wow. He lost in you. <laughs> so, wow. A couple no. of weeks ago, I said, Raw. Yeah, like, yeah. He's, 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 exactly. He said a couple of weeks ago, he impressed you. <laughs> but before a couple of weeks ago, what was your perception about Hamas? I'm not, not too sure because he might get injured. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, to be honest with you, as to my top 
four um, 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 Premier League teams. Obviously, it's going to be Man City, Liverpool. And I have a little bit of change this week around because of what I've seen so far. Yeah. And I would say Everton, I'll give Everton the third place. Oh, yeah? Yes. Okay. Wow. And the reason I said Everton, they go. Oh, manager that won literally everything. And Chelsea is the third. And who else? And I would say Arsenal, fourth. Oh, what? Yep. Arsenal Champions League. Yeah, really. Yep. <laughs> I have my reasons. Do you know what I'm saying? This. Okay. The same thing where I've been saying I want Poch have seen similar thing in Arsenal. With just Arteta. yeah, just less than a few months, he changed the club dramatically. He has. So just see what ha- what's about to what's coming up. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And I, we're not even making the top six. I don't see not even making top six. My prediction, of course, uh, my sign of the season so far, of course, just like everyone else, is, it is James Rodriguez. He has. Really impressed me playing for Everton. Second would be Allen. None of mm-hmm. our players, of course. Mm-hmm. Definitely none of our players. Um, where w- w- the top four definitely um, it will be between, of course, Liverpool and Manchester City if they start sorting themselves out. And finishing third, I'm gonna have to give it to Chelsea. I think Chelsea will do well, even though they're gonna have their ups and downs. And who will finish fourth will be between Everton and Arsenal. I see us finishing probably fifth or sixth, depending on whether we sack Oli. If we sack Oli with it by the end of November or earlier than that, if we leave it to December. So next week. Mm, next, even sack today. Next week. Even today, okay. if we sack Oli and bring in Poch, then I, my, my hopes are high oh. that we might finish the top four. But Match United are not like Real Madrid when they see that there's a disaster coming, they will sack them to save their season. We're not proactive, we're reactive. Yeah. And right now we should sack Oli to save our season. Bro, let me just say one thing. Let me just say one thing. I thought you said this in the show. Oli lost six one, right? And he stole Manchester United. Barcelona manager lost to um, Bayern Munich. He got sacked the next day. <laughs> Why is Oli still Manchester United? Because you mentioned something, you just clicked that. You just don't know, guys. But you know that for sure when Barcelona got you got, got, you said had, got pumped. Got sex up by Bayern Munich <laughs> too. Yeah, got them pregnant. Got Barcelona pregnant real quick. Yeah, was it eight? Eight two. Manager got sacked. Next we day. got pammed. We got bent over. They done missionary on us. Side all the type of positions that they can think of, and le- and probably come down our face as well. <laughs> yeah, uh, Manager yeah. hasn't got sacked yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, lucky but guys, we come close to the end. We are come to the end. Sorry, guys. I want to give a puzzle to my bro, a mook for his socials. Where can the man them and the gal them and the granny them and the, you know, find you? To be honest with you, I don't mind. I'll, I will, we love fans. So here Where we can are. they find you? <laughs> yeah, they can find me on the socials. What's your socials? <laughs> this is, I don't, I don't want to too much Snapchat no more. Because nah. I'm getting too much eye on Snap. Okay, anyways. what's you your can Instagram? Find me on, you can find me on Instagram, pretty flacco. <laughs> my Snapchat's getting too much. Okay, thank you for telling us that. Yeah. And Jets, um, what do you have in store for us this Bro, week? Find me outside Ed's house, man. With a D- ballet. Don't know. Don't know. I'm not going to go No violence. No violence. No violence. No violence. But if, but if you live in Manchester, <laughs> do your thing. Do your thing, man. Right. Do your thing. We leave you like Man just hopes man's at home in it this time, you know? Uh, Don't tell no one. <laughs> We just don't catch him sleeping still. <laughs> but yeah, last message from me, United fans, stop buying United merchandise, stop buying season tickets, stop pumping money into the club because obviously transfer windows are showing, we're not getting anything back. Stop it. And last word for me, I could say I'm really proud of all of us, the Manchester fans, for going through what we're going through and still sticking up for this club because we love it. Like my friend, my man said here, we are the man of the match. Let's stay strong, put ourselves together, mm-hmm. and be optimistic. Remember, guys, remember to subscribe to the channel, yeah. smash that like button, remember to share. You can always find me on, on the official Instagram of, of Red United TV, which is Red United TV One, baby. You know what I mean? <laughs> find me. My personal IG is Ivorin on the Sports Five. Same for Twitter as well. Remember, guys, as always, try to keep it united if you can. And remember to keep it red united. We are out. Peace out.